Hey there, Sharon here and wherever you're watching this today in the world, I hope you are having a wonderful day. Now thank you for tuning into this video where I'm going to be talking you through this resource that we are giving you. Now broadly speaking there are eight types of questions that you ask in your piano lessons. So today this resource is going to provide you with a little bit of information about what those eight different types of questions are, explaining the, the trigger words for certain types of questions, and telling you a little bit more about how effective or less effective these different types of questions are. So for example, when you start a question with something like, can you, can you improve that skill? You're asking a skinny question. Now, these types of questions, will only require the student to respond with a yes or a no answer. So the problem with them is that they don't give our students a chance to reflect, a chance to really think about what it is we're, we're wanting them to dig into. Can you improve that skill? They're probably going to say, yep. Yeah. And you might say back to them, okay, great. I look forward to hearing that played better next week. So here's the thing. Does the student really, like I mean really, do they know what they need to do to improve that skill? If we have asked that skinny question, there is no evidence that they do, unless we ask a different question. So instead of asking the skinny question, can you improve that skill, you might ask a, ask a fat question. So starting a question with what? What might you do to improve that skill? So no longer can your student come back with that yes, no answer because you've invited them to think for themselves and you've asked them to give a considered response. So when you ask questions that begin with why and what and how, you're asking a better question. And then you've got lots of other different types of questions. You've got low order questions and high order questions and emotional questions and metacognitive questions and imposter questions, and one of my favourite is the all question. A-W-E, and what else? So this resource is giving you seven, eight pop-up cards that you can use in your studio to help you understand and track the different types of questions that you ask. So you can see here that you print off these eight pages, and then you just fold it and you pop that on top of your desk beside your piano or maybe on the top of your piano. And the idea is that you choose one card for a particular day. So you're digging into one type of question. You're going to set this pop-up card and then the example I've got here is skinny questions. So. What's a skinny question? Skinny questions are closed questions that begin with, do you, would you, can you? Skinny questions, the problem is they only require yes and no answers and they don't give our students a chance to reflect. And then we've got an action for the day. Every time you ask a skinny question in your piano lessons today, tick a box. So what you're going to do is tick a box here just to figure out how often you actually ask these types of questions. And the other thing is, write down two skinny questions that you ask, and then at the end of the day, think about how could you have asked that question in a better way? Might you've been able to frame it as a fat question? So we've got eight of these, all different types of questions. And the idea is that you just track the sorts of questions that you ask and you think about the sorts of answers that your students are giving. The final tip I'm going to give here in this video is do you wait for your students' answers? Yeah, the average time that we teachers wait for a student to respond to a question that we've asked them is 0.9 of a second. I, I mean, I know that's really quite quite alarming isn't it so what we want to do is we want to just give our students that little bit of space 
to answer the question we've just asked. So the longer you wait, the more likely your students will be to actually figure out an answer for themselves. Except that there will be moments of silence. I know that initially this can feel really quite uncomfortable, uh, but it does give your chance, your, yourself a chance to figure out, okay, does the student understand this? Or do I need to ask maybe a different question? So hey, I really hope that you enjoy this resource. And if you've got any other questions or you just maybe want to let me know how you're getting on with this resource, I would love, I'd really love to hear from you. My personal email is Sharon at CuriousPiano.org and I really look forward to hearing back from you soon. Okay, enjoy the rest of your day and enjoy finding out more about the questions that you ask in your piano lessons. Bye for now.